Hi there, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. Today, we're talking forced induction. But first, some basic principles. If you've got a five liter engine that's 100% efficient, that means that each time it completes a full engine cycle, so two crank revolutions and one cam revolution, the engine consumes five liters of air. We mix that air with fuel, light it with a spark plug, and boom, we've got power. The more air, so specifically the more nitrogen and oxygen that's in the air, that we cram into the engine, the more power the engine will make. Now, at sea level, we've got one atmosphere, or 14.7 psi of pressure on us, and more importantly, pushing air into our lungs and engines. If we went to the top of Pikes Peak in Colorado, USA, which is above, oh, it's about 4,300 meters above sea level, the pressure acting on us would only be about 8.8 .8 psi, and I'd become short of breath. This is because with each breath, I'd be getting about 40% less actual charge. Exactly the same as what would be happening in your engine. And you'd notice the loss of power. Now, if only there was a way to squeeze more than atmospheric pressure into your engine. Well, there is. Force it with forced induction. A turbo or supercharger does exactly this. A supercharger is an air compressor driven off the engine itself normally by a belt, a connecting shaft, or off the crankshaft directly. The supercharger RPM is determined by the gear ratio between the supercharger gear and the drive gear. The higher the ratio, the faster the supercharger will turn and the higher the boost pressure will be. A turbocharger, on the other hand, is still an air compressor, but rather than being driven from the engine's crankshaft, the compressor wheel is driven by an exhaust wheel mounted on a common shaft. So if we pop this thing open, I've pulled the nuts and bolts out of this, so exhaust housing where the exhaust from the engine goes through here and then out our exhaust pipe. Here's our little wastegate flap that bypasses exhaust gases around the turbine wheel straight out into the exhaust pipe to regulate our boost pressure. We've got our compressor wheel on the front, our air filter goes on the front here, you can probably hear that, this one doesn't sound too good. Our air filter goes on the front here, air gets pulled in, pushed out under pressure into the engine, and that's our exhaust wheel that gets spun up by the engine's exhaust gases. So the exhaust wheel's driven by exhaust gases that otherwise would have just been wasted straight out the tailpipe. So sure, it's not entirely free. The exhaust turbine does create a restriction for the engine. However, the, the recovered energy well outweighs the loss of the restriction of the turbine wheel. But it's not all turbocharger. Superchargers have the advantage of having almost no boost lag. Because they're driven directly by the engine, as soon as the engine has revs, the supercharger is supplying boost pressure. Turbochargers, on the other hand, need time to spool up. So this is known as turbo lag. This is the time that it takes for the engine exhaust gases to spin up the turbine wheel, in turn spinning up the compressor wheel, pushing boost pressure out of here into the engine. You, you then get this rush of power across a narrow RPM range, which can make the engine twitchy and a bit difficult to control. Supercharger boost, on the other hand, is a lot more consistent, uh, linear and typically more controllable, um, mimicking the power delivery of an engine with a much larger capacity. But superchargers do have the downside of being difficult to change the boost pressure on. They rely on systems like overpressure relief valves, uh, mechanical clutches to enable and disable the drive to the supercharger, or to have the user change the drive pulleys to achieve the desired boost at the right RPM. Not with a turbocharger. Like we spoke about before, this waste gate adjusts how much exhaust pressure, or how much exhaust goes through the turbine wheel, and how much just gets wasted straight out into the, into the exhaust pipe, that way, you've got control of your boost pressure on the fly. You can flick a switch, you can choose how much pressure goes out through the exhaust and how much goes in through the turbine wheel, resulting in more or less boost pressure. Regardless of personal preference, however you compress the air and feed it into your engine, it will make more power. And to me, that's what it's all about. Thanks very much for watching. See you next week.